Hey there, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the internals of one of Laravel's components, Eloquent. Eloquent is definitely one of the most used and most important components of the Laravel framework. And uh, well, it is very complex. It's one of the most, if not the most complex component of Laravel as well. And we're going to take a look at some specifics, at some things at the internal uh, functionality of some things of Eloquent, the basics. In later videos, we might go a little bit more in depth, but on this one, I just wanna show you how the basics work. For example, when you set a property, what's happening when you save a relationship, when you save a model, how do those work? So let's jump into the code. Okay, so here I have a very basic task. It doesn't really do anything, it just creates a user. And that's just so we can keep running this block of code repeatedly. Now, to start things off, one of the most important things about Eloquent is that most of it is fake. For example, whenever we set a property like this, we are not actually setting a property within the class. This property does not exist. If we go into user, you can see that we haven't defined any of those properties, name, email, or password. Yet, we can call them, we can set them, we can mutate them, we can use them uh, from Eloquent. Now, the magic here happens through the set and the get magic methods. Let's take a look into those. So here I am setting a property and uh, let's go into our user model. It extends another class called authenticatable. Let's go into it. It's actually a user class. That's just an alias. And as you can see, it extends model. That's the eloquent model class that we want to look at. As you can see, it uses a lot of traits and it has a lot of properties as well. We're going to start with underscore underscore set. This is the magic method to set attributes. So uh, let's make a change here. Let's do a dump and die and dump the key and the value. And then we're going to run the test. As you can see, we got name and Mateus. So name is the property's name and the value is what we're passing. This is not related to Laravel, this is a PHP thing. So if you don't know about magic methods, you might want to look into them. Now, all the magic methods get forwarded to another method. For example, the get magic method goes into get attribute. The set magic method goes into set attribute. Let's take a look into this method. All right, so we do a bunch of checks. First, look for a mutator. We don't have those, so we can skip those. Then we'll look if we're talking about um, a date attribute, a carbon instance or a daytime object. Well, a carbon instance is a daytime object as well. Then we look into castables. We're going to skip those. And just at the very end, we actually set this value into a key within an attributes array. So we basically have an associative array that represents all of the attributes within the model, something like this. And we can set this by calling the get attributes method. So let's do a dd user get attributes. And we need to call this method. It simply returns the attributes array after merging some things but that's all it does. So let's call this. As you can see, we get an array with the attributes. If we were to go ahead and just move this a couple of lines down, whoops, let me rerun this. Then we get all of the attributes we set. And this is what Eloquent's doing. Whenever you set a property, it checks some things to, um, how would I put this? Standardized values. So if you are setting a mutated attribute or if it's an enum value, you have to mutate that value or you have to set it differently. Because of all the magic that Eloquent supports, you can pass an enum as a value. And if you define that on your model, it is going to be converted. You can pass a date object if you have that set on your model as well. Anyway, you can do many things. You have custom casting and whatnot. So on the set attribute method, Eloquent takes care of not only checking whether we're talking about one of those special cases, but also handling them. And then if we're not talking about any of those special cases, we can just standardize the value that we're passing. And then at the end of the method, we set the value within this hash table, within this lookup table that we have within the model. So the attributes array is a key part of Eloquent. It's a key part of most active record implementations. That's where we actually store those values. You might've noticed that when dealing with Eloquent, even though you have those properties, your IDE will not recognize them. And that's because they do not actually exist. They exist as an associative array within the model, but we're, we just have syntax sugar to get them. Another way you could do this is do something like user 
get attribute singular, and then you can pass an attribute. And if we run this, yeah, we get what we wanted. And if we look at the method, we have some checks and we're going to look into those soon. But at the end of it, right here, whoops, let me go back. Let's go to get attribute. So if we have no key, we return no. Remember that if we try to access a key on an array that doesn't exist, we would get an error. In this case, if the key is either no, if we don't pass anything here, we return no. Or if the key doesn't exist, we also return no. Uh, we use this method called through missing attribute exception if applicable. So um, we check if we're using the prevents existing missing attributes. But if we do not, we just return no. But let, let's go back into get attribute. So at the end, it calls this get attribute value. And if we look at it, we get an attribute from an array and then we transform model value. I don't actually know what this method does. Oh, it casts some things. It does some checks, check casts, casts to daytime, casts an attribute, but at the end we return the value. So we have those two methods at the model class, the magic get and the magic set that are responsible for doing the magic, for fetching those attributes for you and also for setting them. We can go a little bit deeper in the next videos but let's stop here for attribute setting. Another important piece of Eloquent is persistence. So we can save objects in the database and we can also fetch objects. They all use the query builder beneath them, but today we're only going to talk about persistent models. If we take a look at save, let's take a look at this method. We have this query variable and this is a query builder instance. If we look at it, you can see that it returns a query builder, an eloquent query builder class. So we have a method called new eloquent builder. We pass a base query builder and we set the model. So we set a reference to the model. That's a pointer to the current class, in this case, user. So let's go back to save. We get this query builder and then we have some event firing. We're going to skip this. If the model already exists, we want to update the record. We don't want to create a new one. So let's skip this as well. And at the end of the method, we perform an insert. So we actually insert a new row into the database and we use the query builder for that. That's why we are passing this query instance that we create right here. So we pass that to this method and let's go down a little bit. So we get the attributes for the insert operation and this is within the model, right? We have a reference to the builder class right here, but we're still, we're still within the model class. And at the end we call query insert. So if we were to dump and die this. Oops, not this one. Let's do it right here. Here's what we have. So we have name, email, and password, and those are all values that we set. And then we have created at and updated at, and those are managed by Eloquent automatically, unless we specify otherwise, but it usually handles those. If we were updating this record, we wouldn't have created at, and we can actually test this. But uh, that's basically the difference. If we're creating a new record from scratch, we also fill the created at timestamp. If we're just updating an existing record, we only fill updated at. All right, so that's what it does. It inserts something either here or here. It depends whether the table uses auto incrementable IDs. And then it updates a property call exists and also was recently created. That's why you can use this property to identify whether a record was recently created or not. Because if you're just fetching it from the database, this is going to be false, right? And then we just fire a model event. So the save operation is actually quite simple. The tricky part is the query builder. And that's why we pass the reference of the current class for the query builder. We have two query builders in Laravel. We have the base query builder, which is this one, eliminate database query. And we have the eloquent query builder. And the eloquent query builder is a little bit different. It is aware of a model. That's why we have this model instance right here. So if you're just using the query builder by yourself, you can use the regular query builder. Eloquent itself will use the eloquent query builder. But at the end of the day, we are just passing the attributes for the insert operation. Now, what if we are updating an existing record? Well, then the call goes into the perform update. This is a nice check. So if we haven't changed anything in memory, and that's another thing that eloquent does, it stores a diff of what was mutated within the attributes. If we haven't changed anything, we just return true because we don't have to 
talk to the database. If we have mutated something though, if the model is dirty, then we want to perform an update. And it goes the same way. It's the same thing, but we want to fetch what's dirty. So if we do, we would have to persist it uh, twice. So let me go here. We're gonna save this. I'm going to set the name for something else. So something else. And then we're going to save this again. And let's run this. So only the name story, that's the only thing we have changed. So if we have dirty attributes, that is, if this array is bigger than zero, then we want to set some keys for the save query and then call update. And this is all within the model class as well. So this returns an instance of eloquent pewter as well. Let's see this. Yeah, as you can see, eloquent pewter. We call get key name within the model to see what the key name is. It's usually ID. And then we get the model's ID. That way the query builder knows which record to update exactly. And that's pretty much how the save and the update operations and filling attributes and getting attributes work. Obviously we have castable attributes, that kind of thing, relationships, and we're going to look into those on the next video. I try to keep this video pretty short, so let me know if you liked it. We only cover the basics. There's so much more to talk about eloquent relationships, castable uh, attributes, events. There's a lot, and we're going to look into those in the next videos. Bye-bye, see you soon.